Hi there, cartoon fans and honest citizens everywhere. This here is your cartoonist dude, middle-aged cartoonist. This is part two on a Saturday morning here in bright and sunny the fictional Fairview, Illinois. I can't tell you where I really am. I'm at an undisclosed location. But anyway, here we go. You may remember last time in part one, we went through the various stages of creating a comic book with our uh, fictional character here, the uh, Mighty Energy Girl, who lives in said fictional city of Fairview. And uh, we started this drawing right here. And you uh, saw us go through the various different steps up to this point. And then uh, good old Mr. Cartoon's hand fell asleep and he had to stop. Anyway, we are going to resume where we left off last time. Hands can be a difficult area. But you know, sometimes you just got to jump in. We sketch the basic outlines with pencil, and as we said, there are a lot in a female, and especially a muscular one, there are a lot of very circular shapes. And it's just a matter of connecting the different circles. You can see how from the uh, wrist on down, it's like a, an elongated round shape, and then we have our biceps coming up from that, which connects to the round shape of the shoulder. As we then bring the forearm down, we have another kind of elongated round shape. This is the triceps muscle. And generally, the way the body is constructed is when one is contracted, it becomes bunched up and round, and the one underneath it becomes elongated and pulled out, because the biceps is for pulling the forearm up, the triceps is for stretching it out. So if her her hand were to be stretched straight out like this, the biceps would be stretched long ways and the triceps would be bunched up. That's the way it works. But they're both just a couple of big old circles. So we can just then shade them like you would a round shape, kind of like that, and voila. Same thing with the elongated round shape of the forearm. Now my hand is still a little bit of a asleep here, and this is just a very quick sketch, so that's why we're not trying to keep all our lines perfectly straight, but at least you get the idea. We'll put the other hand in now. You see I just got kind of a blob there. Notice that the four fingers are just kind of elongated shapes themselves, kind of round like, like little uh, hot dog links. And the fifth one, the thumb. Underneath it, we put what we call the ball of the hand. And then class, now what do we do? The forearm is a, an elongated round shape coming down like a water balloon filling up where the place where it connects to the faucet is this thin area of the wrist, and then it gets bigger the further down you go, kind of like that. We then put this biceps in behind it like that. Now, because the uh, forearm is pulled up, the biceps would be round and contracted, and the triceps underneath it would be long and straightened out, like that. Boy, now we know a little about anatomy and physiology. Yeah, that's about all I know, so uh, good luck with that. But uh, at least you got a bonus. You didn't only learn that this guy can talk a good talk, but uh, Basically, he'd better stick to his day job. Here we go. Energy Girl has very long, lustrous hair. It turned gray at an early age, since her 30s. But as you can see, it is still very full. Even though the character does not fly, it always looks heroic to have things that kind of blow majestically in the wind. So long hair is a plus. And after years of drawing her without one, I finally broke down and gave her a cape. Everybody's got to admit, superheroes just look better with one. And as for that one person who talks in a certain way, who I cannot mention because of trademark, who does not like capes, you know who I mean. Well, she is just going to have to live with it. Oh, well, great Scott. Oh, gosh, one of the mice in the house is sneezing. Did you hear that? <laughs> Okay, as you can see, the um, legs also are basically just elongated round shapes. This is the, uh, they're in two halves, just like the arms are, but bigger. 
So the upper leg or thigh comes down, it connects to the the joint is called of course the knee or kneecap and now we're going to stretch out this leg is going to be tucked back behind. Now because it's tucked back behind that is it's pulled up against the thigh. The muscle that does so would be all bunched up. I don't know what it's called but this is the leg version of the tricep of the biceps and so we have it as a bunched up round shape like that. And then we can have the foot coming in down below. Now I'm told, at least it used to be, that most women don't like to be kidded about having big feet, but let's face it, that's one of E-Girl's uh, hallmarks, is she has always had big feet, and she's good with it. She doesn't mind if I point that out to you. So, When you can lift a bus, you don't mind sticks and stones can break your bones, but names can never hurt you. If anybody does bother you too much with names, you can just go over there and tell them which tree they'd like their bus put in, and then they usually leave you alone. Okay. Do a little shading here. Again, because of time constraints, I'd be a little more careful if I were doing this for real here. This is just a demonstration, but... So there we, oh, we need to put her other leg coming back here, like that, with her boot. We're, and uh, let's see, we could bring the cape kind of flowing in the wind like this. And here we have it so far. Okay, the old cartoonist's hand is uh, falling asleep again. So we're almost going to take a break here again. I can't even get the top off this pen. How about that? But uh, this is basically how it does. Now, as I mentioned before, one of the last steps in the black and white is to add a little heavier inking both for shadows to add contrast we can balance the picture by making certain areas blacker because black dark areas tend to draw the eye I also tend to put a little halo around the outline of the central character and the reason for this is when we put the background in the colored background we do not want her just disappearing into the background like a big blob which is what she will do under normal circumstances. But if we put this halo around and leave it white after we color the background dark, it will make the character kind of pop out into the foreground, which is exactly what we want. Part of the uh, challenge of the artist is without the viewer realizing it, the artist gently manipulates the drawing so the viewer's eye goes where the artist wants it to go. And this is one of the little tricks we can do to bring that about. Okay, we're going to stop here. I'm going to add just a tad of color to show you that step, and then we are going to call it a day because uh, Saturday is beckoning, the uh, middle-aged cartoonist has things to do, and once again, if my hand falls asleep much more, I might drop the camera, and that would be kind of a dumb way to end this video. So, okay, we're ready for our colors. Let's see if I can get them over here without dropping them. Uh, just like your average four-year-old, I got my nice box here of colors. I hate to tell you, but middle-aged cartoonist is also partially colorblind, so he is eternally grateful to this certain color company that makes these because they're nice enough to put the name of the color on the side of the pen. Thank you, guys. We uh, colorblind people do appreciate that. Okay. Now, the trick about colors is contrasts and the temperature of the colors. I don't fully understand why, but certain colors are what they call warm and other colors are what they call cool. I don't mean that like uh, cool, but I mean literally there are certain colors that just seem to kind of pop out of the page at you and there are others that are a little more subdued. The uh, poppy colors are called the warm colors and these include yellow and orange and red. Therefore, since the whole point of having a superhero uniform is so that you're easily identified when you're on the job, so just like a policeman or a fireman or others, so that people know who you are and they uh, know to stay clear if you're 
in pursuit of a bad guy or something. We want nice, bright colors. Also, bright colors sell comic books. This is why you don't see the superheroes of the comic books wearing brown and stuff like that. Look over there. It's Businessman. Businessman in his dark brown drab suit blends into the crowd. Nope, I don't think so. Uh, no, I had a good... This is... There's only one color I found that really works for flesh or skin, and that's this. It is called... Uh, well, I don't know if it's a trademark name, but let's just say it's kind of a tan color. If you are a person of color, and I've got nothing against people of color, but if you are a person of color, one of the distinctions you have is it's even harder to do your skin because they don't make a color in this set that comes even close, and so we have to do...